Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're joining us today. Uh, man, it got chilly last night. Um, hope everyone's water lines are okay. One of ours froze. Um, got it thawed out, but I'm going to have to fix that. It, it got chilly. Um, Olympics starts today. How exciting is that? I love the Olympics. Um, I don't know which one's my favorite, summer or winter. Every time they come, the, the whatever one is there is my favorite. So uh, I love the Olympics. Anytime a sport shows up on television, uh, my son asks, who are we cheering for? Which team are we cheering for? And now Gemma does the same. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, sport, are, sport is good for life lessons, too. It teaches you how to lose. Because you're going to lose a lot in life, right? Well, good morning. I'm glad you're with us, Terry and Diana, John and Jan, June, Bev. What a great group of people. Let's make our beginning this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you pull out the YouVersion Bible app, our verse of the day is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Bum bum ba bum 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 I think they picked this text because the Olympics starts today. Everyone who enters into the Olympic Games is required to devote in in ancient times and uh they were required to devote ten months to strict training. So presumably the same rule applies to uh the games at uh, Isthmia. So Corinth is right next to Athens, right next to the birthplace of the games. So Paul is really being contextually aware to the people around him. Maybe there are even athletes in the congregation that are starting to prepare for some games. Who knows? But it's, it's well known that in ancient times and in modern times even, uh, the competitors, they, they end up uh, renouncing not only bad habits, but maybe even giving up some things that are fine all by themselves. They, they might give up alcohol for the games or something like that so that it doesn't hinder them, uh, even though it's by itself not a bad thing. But their goal is to focus specifically on their preparations. And then, you know, the, this little wreath comment, that's what they would they'd give you a, a wreath uh, a little crown of olive branches, olive leaves, and and the uh, and the leaves on it. So the the theme of self control applies then to the Christian life, not just to uh, the Olympian. Self control is one of the fruits of the spirit. If you go to Galatians chapter five verse twenty three, you have the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self control. And this should be found in the life of the Christian. So av avoid what, what hinders success in the race. And here in this instance, on uh, what destroys the faith of others as well. So this is why Paul says, you know, to the Greeks I became a Greek, to the Jews I became a Jew. Um to people who live in a culture of Olympic athletes. He becomes one who is aware of this. And uh, for, for the benefit of not destroying the faith of others. He's keenly aware of this. Keenly aware of the things that would prevent someone else from having a faith that clings to Christ. And this is where we get to the perishable versus imperishable. He says this: these Olympians, they receive a wreath of olive leaves. In, in other games, they used laurels. Um, and, but after a while, after you win that, it dies. So let's say you're an Olympian and you win, you, you win it. You win 
the olive leaf wreath. You put it on your shelf at home. It's going to die. It, even that, even the Olympian's prize dies. But the imperishable is what we go after. The eternal prize of life with God through faith in Jesus Christ. And this is where he ends up going in a couple verses before this. That's what he says the goal is. So the life of the Christian is one of self-control. In all things, Paul says. In all things, self-control. And he, he holds things in perspective of both for the benefit of the other believer and for yourself. Both are in view of this. It's, it's not just only for the other person. It's also for yourself, for your own benefit. What a, what a neat way for him to be so aware. And so in our self-control, we end up clinging to the true prize. Faith in Jesus Christ. You notice that's how we began. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remembering that eternal promise that was made to me. I'm a baptized child of God. I, that is imperishable. No one's taken that away from me. And so that's a portion of self-control, to live as a redeemed child of God and remembering those things. There's a discipline there to do that. Well, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have given us such an amazing gift in your Son, his life, death, and resurrection for us. We remember all these promises that he's made to, that you've made to us through him and his life. Lord, we ask that you would help us to cling to these imperishable things, that we would exercise self-control in our life, both for our benefit and for the benefit of those around us. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So as you watch the Olympics, consider the discipline that they had to take, the self-control they had to undertake in order to uh, excel, and consider how you are exceedingly similar as a a spiritual athlete exercising self-control. Well, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, We'll be live here. We'll be live in person for worship on Sunday. And... uh, forward to seeing you soon. Have a blessed day in Christ.